here's one of the purple rands, purple, black, and white rands that you see. Um, I believe this one is in super pristine condition. I think it's also available to buy right now. And this one is in mint condition. I, the owner doesn't even want to play it because it's in such great condition. And thankfully, he has another one just like this that he used for gigging. So he doesn't feel obligated to use this one, which I want either. The owner has both of these right here. The one you just saw is the one on the left with the black hardware. The one on the right is the one he played throughout the late 80s, early 90s, I think. And this one, he doesn't feel obligated to store in its case till its dying day. And that's the one we're going to look at right now. So this is the player grade one. This one has the chrome hardware and three toggle switches, whereas the one in pristine condition only has one. Next one up is another white and light blue one. This one has three toggle switches, chrome hardware. And I swear to God, I've, I've seen this one around for the last 15 years and I think the pickups have been changed every single time I've seen this one. I had to look closely at this one. I thought it was the same blue and black one that I showed earlier in this video, but it is not, but it's very similar. This one has EMGs, one volume, one toggle, but the paint scheme is a slightly tad different. Again, I think my theory is that Rand usually painted two guitars at once with the same colors, just a little different schemes. I'm gonna call this the Michael James Johnson Rand. I thought I might have talked about this Rand earlier because I may be mistaken at this for one I previously talked about, but I don't think I did. I can't tell the color of it because it's black and white. I thought it was maybe the black and white Rand or, or a pink black and white one, but no, I don't think it is. I think this is its own Rand. And it says, to April, thanks for last night. Signed by Michael James Johnson. Great stuff. It's to my knowledge that Doyle from the Misfits played the only Rand guitar with this, this certain shape as you're going to see. Here's an ad. This is the Doyle Fan Club on the top right says Rand Guitars. I'm not sure what the hell's going on here. If this is the actual Rand that's used but it looks like it's like a, a Kaler on it or it's been routed out. I don't know. Here's a picture of Ed Roman on the left with Doyle from the Misfits on the right. The one Ed Roman is holding is the Rand guitar. The one on the right, I'm not sure what it is. If it's a Rand guitar or something that Doyle, he built himself, I don't know. But the one on the left is the only body shape of this Rand I know. It looks like there's a Floyd Rose on it, one humbucker, and one volume. Looks like the fretboard is 27 frets. And the fretboard inlays are not the pyramid. It looks like there's some kind of dot variation. This is also one of my more favorite paint schemes. It's just so 80s to me and kind of interesting. But this is the only picture I got of it. But, you know, the, the usual production stuff. It's got the Floyd one volume, three toggles. You know, you guys know the drill by now. This is one I found recently, and it's different than other Rands I've seen. It has an Annihilator body, but a regular Rand headstock. And the paint job is different, too. So it's got this green base thing going on, but then in the middle, it has some kind of white triangle in it. I've never seen one quite like this. Looks like a Floyd, one humbucker, one volume. I don't know what the deal with this Rand is, but it's either unfinished or it was never painted. 
one humbucker, one volume, one toggle. The headstop is, is painted black. It's got the chrome Floyd. Why I like this one is because you can see the deep set neck tenon going all the way to the bridge pickup. This black Rand was the Rand on the new website in 2008 when Rand Hevner was planning on revamping everything, making a basic, basic style Rand. And this Rand, he was going to do a whole run of just black painting Rands, okay? So this is the only thing I've ever seen of this one, which I imagine this guitar exists somewhere, right? So I guess I'm going to count this one in. So the Rand that was a, the main picture on the website in 2008 I'm including this one in. Another rand I'm going to include, even though we don't have a picture on it, is one actually owned by Vivian Campbell. He confirmed that he indeed he owns some kind of Irish green rand that's been in storage for 20 plus years and he kind of forgot about it, but he did confirm he has it. So we don't have pictures of it, but I'm also including it in this count. All right, guys, you know I'm going to save the absolute best for last. So far, we got about 37 rands accounted for with a picture except for the Vivian Campbell Green Rand. This last rand I'm going to show you is what I currently own, and it's going to be number 38, and you're going to be impressed. Rand guitar number 38 is what I'm going to be called the Butchered Rand. Some of you might be crying right now. Some of you might be sad. Some of you might be mad. Some of you might not be knowing what to do right now. Some of you might broke some furniture right by you at this very second. Out of the fear, pure frustration and anger of seeing this photo. But let me tell you, don't you worry, friend. I am going to restore this Rand guitar right here to its former glory. That is the, what the next video series is about, all right? It's going to be really freaking interesting. So I'm going to explain this guitar a little bit more in my next video. I'm going to go really in-depth on it in a video series. So I'm not going to be doing this pictures and talking into this. I'm actually got a video, all right? But anyway, the guy who owned this, for one, guys, he felt bad, okay? He felt bad about doing this. He admitted, yeah, yeah, I was a fucking idiot. It is what it is. The guy felt bad. He kind of wanted to do like a Telecaster thing. And I'm just glad he sold it and I got it so I can restore it to its glory. But anyway... This guy, he wanted to do this Telecaster thing, and he butchered this probably like in the early 90s. And before you guys start bitching, just remember, this shit happened fucking all the time in the late 80s, early 90s with Kramers and Hamers and all these fucking 80s and 90, 80s guitars mainly because my theory is that, you know, Eddie Van Halen butchered his Super Strat Frankenstein guitar. So, you know what? It's cool for me to fucking do it too. And th this shit was going on all the time. And unfortunately, it couldn't, have, you know, it's okay when it's a more production line, like a Kramer and Hammer, at least there's more of them, right? It just so happened it was a Rand, but I think it's great because it's so reminiscent of the times. So this guy, you know, the Super Strats were gone and they hated that look so bad, they were willing to just butcher this to make it look like a Telecaster to fit into the grunge era and the non-hair metal era. To me, this guitar is history. It gives you, shows you the history of how fucking crazy the music change was of the late 80s going into the early 90s and how the influence of Eddie Van Halen was and how people were modding the guitars. I fucking love it, actually. I fucking love this guitar, and I think it's interesting that this guy butchered it because I'm going to bring it back to, to its former glory, and it's just great history, and I love history. All right, guys, stay in touch. I'm going to do a video series on this. Let's bring this puppy back to life. You guys will be satisfied.